Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It is Thursday, April 30th, 2015. Now, if you remember, the CIA set up an Operation Mockingbird. That was the way they were going to control the press to put out their, their narrative that they wanted. We still have a Mockingbird press that just repeats mindlessly whatever the government tells them to say without ever questioning it, no matter how absurd. But a key part of that, a key tool, is the mocking that goes along with it. That's why they came up with the term conspiracy theorist. It was to discredit anyone who questioned the ridiculous stories that the uh, government was giving us, the official story about the JFK assassination. Now we see there's a mainstream media pressing to criticize both Governor Abbott as well as InfoWars. Mainstream media rushes to demonize InfoWars over Jade Helm. This is a story by Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones. They point out that at every turn, we have stressed that this exercise, Jade Helm, serves to acclimatize Americans to the sight of troops on the street. And it's part of a wider and manifestly provable agenda to prepare for civil unrest in America. But look at the way that the media reports this. Bloomberg's David Knowles appears to find it abnormal that any news outlet would even dare to express skepticism about the military talking points on Jade Helm. Salon.com went even further, as they point out, this is the title, Right-Wing Lunatics Think the Military is Planning to Invade Texas. Then the Houston Chronicle does an article on it, talks about alien abduction and Bigfoot. Raw Story talks about a, has a picture of a frightened woman wearing a tinfoil hat. It's very easy to do these straw man arguments. We have never said that this was going to be the rollout of martial law. We've had people uh, talk about in many different outlets how, and in the past, we have seen when drills have turned into a live action. But this is part of a larger operation. It was just a year ago that Joe Biggs and I were in AP Hill, inside of a separate training area, a secure training area that was an American city. So when they say they need to train in American cities, they have already built American cities on their military bases. Now this is a broader exposure, a broader exercise that gives them even more real world experience in that particular thing. And we see these exercises uh, increasing both in frequency as well as in scope and scale. That's what we're concerned about. I got a call from a local news uh, ABC affiliate saying they were doing a series on fact versus fear. And of course they contacted us because they wanted to know what the fear side of this was. This is what she said in her memo. My news director told me to ask about what the fear is behind Jade Helm. Why are you worried about the military being nearby? I understand there's a general distrust of the government. Does the fear stem from belief that the government military is lying to the public? Well, certainly that is part of it. I was able to talk to her, and I, I gotta say I appreciate the fact that she did real journalism. She didn't do a hit piece on us like these mainstream media outlets, like Bloomberg, like the Houston Chronicle. She actually asked us, what we were afraid of. And I explained to her that we weren't afraid, we had some real concerns, and that we, yes, we did see the military lying. I, part of what they said at Bastrop was that we shouldn't really be concerned about this. It really wasn't any of our business because this was taking place on private property. That's what the Lieutenant Colonel from the Special Forces, who was the public spokesman, said. He said they'd been given invitations from these private property owners and it didn't really concern us. I read to her from the original Jade Helm document that we got that was talking about its operations in Texas. And I explained to her that they were going around, they were using this document and doing a show to all the local city and county governments, telling them that they were seeking written invitations from these governments. Well, if it's all on private property, why do they need to have written invitations from the local government? Clearly, he's not being honest with us. Clearly, there's another agenda going on here. I explained to her that the term unconventional warfare is a Department of Defense uh, expression of art that talks about something that is very specific, like asymmetric warfare. She's gonna do the investigation. I appreciate the fact that they would talk to us, but she didn't have the facts. When I explained to her that uh, this was, they were seeking written invitation, she said, where'd you get that? And I said, well, that's from the original document. She had not seen that. These people in Bloomberg and other places are not even trying to understand what the concerns are. Never, what they're trying to do is just mock anyone who questions the government narrative. Now, one of the things that we have to be concerned about, of course, is, and we've mentioned this many times, this increased training by the U.S. government 
the advanced prepositioning and militarization of the police, the prepositioning of MRAPs and other uh, pieces of military hardware under the Section 1033 program that we see increasing at a rapid rate. All of this is preparation for some kind of unrest. Are they concerned about a financial collapse? We learned today that in the Texas state legislature, a bill has been put forward. This is House Bill number 2346 that would give law enforcement capacity to the Federal Reserve agents at banks. This says this is an act relating to granting limited state law enforcement authority to commissioned law enforcement officers of a Federal Reserve Bank. Now, you may ask, rightfully so, uh, who, where, why do, does the Federal Reserve have law enforcement agencies there? Well, of course, this is part of the post-September 11th police state that's been created in our country. They have given power to the Federal Reserve banks to commission law enforcement officers. What this bill is doing is recognizing them as federal law enforcement officers and saying they will have state authority to arrest people. They say, although they will not be peace officers under the laws of the state, the bill would give them the powers of arrest, search, and seizure as to any felony or misdemeanor offense created under the laws of the state committed on the premises of a Federal Reserve Bank or while they are protecting an officer or personnel of the Federal Reserve Bank. It makes you curious, doesn't it, as to why they would be so concerned about Federal Reserve Banks needing that kind of protection, arrest protection. Perhaps uh, that's something they foresee coming with an economic collapse. Nevertheless, this is also part of an expanding bureaucracy. And of course, the Federal Reserve is not part of the federal government. It is a private, separate corporation. Nevertheless, we see that law enforcement officers and people who are given these kinds of police powers are exploding. Every bureaucracy, real bureaucracies of the federal government, not the private agencies like the Federal Reserve, but agencies like the Department of Education have been given law enforcement capabilities. It was a couple of years ago, the Washington Post asked, why do we have this solicitation in FedBiz Op of the Department of Education seeking shotguns and personnel armor. They found out less than a year later when the Department of Education staged a raid on a home looking for a mother and wife who was behind in her college loans. They drugged the entire family out on the front lawn in the dead of night, face down with guns loaded to their heads, looking for the wife and mother who was no longer with the family. That's the kind of abuse, these kinds of no-knock raids that we're seeing from the police all the time. But it is also, I think, characteristic of what we're seeing from our government. They are creating swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. And now we have a bill in Texas that's being uh, fought by Jonathan Strickland, another Texas representative. This one was introduced by Representative Pickett. Jonathan Strickland is fighting this bill because we do not need to be multiplying the number of officers who are going to harass us and arrest us. We see, though, that there's even more to this. We have the military-industrial complex. And, of course, when we look at Jade Helm, one of the things that concerns us is the increasing use and involvement of the military domestically in law enforcement capacity. This article that we have on Infowars.com today, Ferguson cops are going to use skunk chemical weapons on protesters. This is something that was developed by the Israeli Defense Forces. It is an extremely powerful, although non-lethal weapon. An article from Defense One breaks this down and says that this is a type of malodorant. In other words, like a, not a deodorant, but a malodorant. They say it is technically non-toxic but it is incredibly disgusting. It's described as a cross between a dead animal and human excrement. Untreated, the smell lingers for weeks. Now, the Israeli uh, Defense Forces have been using this since 2008 against the Palestinians. And that's the way they're going to be treating American citizens in the United States, the way the Palestinians have been abused in Israel. This is a company that is out of Baltimore, so you can bet that it's going to be going to uh, this police department. They mentioned at the beginning of the Defense One that as protesters and police officers clash on the streets, cities like Baltimore, Maryland, and Ferguson, Missouri, the police departments are looking for a way to control the crowds. Now, one of the things that's interesting that I find in this is that back in 2008, of course, this has been used by the Israeli Defense Forces since 2008, but... In the U.S., the U.S. Army was involved back in 2008 creating a stink grenade, 
essentially the same uh, stuff. This was developed by the Army. Now we see that in 2015, the Navy is also involved in the same type of research. So that's one of the things that troubles us about Jade Helm, and that is the increasingly close ties between law enforcement and the military. The ties between the military industrial complex that sees a new profit center in controlling crowds in America and using the military to do it. A very troubling development. When we come back after the break, we're going to get a report from our reporters who are in Baltimore, Maryland. It appears that Walmart is not only banning ammunition, but they're banning toy guns. Maybe it's for the safety of the people in Baltimore. Stay with us. We'll be right back. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Now our reporters, Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs, have gone to Baltimore to report on what's happening there in the wake of the death of Freddie Gray, the riots and the protests that have happened there. It was reported that Walmart had banned ammunition sales. So they went to investigate that. They found out that it was even worse than that. Walmart is banning even BB guns and knives. Here's that report. Jakari Jackson here for InfoWars.com. You guys may have saw the article that Paul Joseph Watson put out the other day detailing how at least one Walmart in the area of Baltimore is refusing ammo sales to its customers citing concerns over the riots as its reasoning. So we're gonna to try to call some in the area. If we find one, we may just stop by and see what they have to say. It's pretty good. Yes, sir. Do you know if you have any 357 Magnum ammunition in stock? We have no ammunition at all in stock. They pulled everything out when the riots came on. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, can you say that again? Yes, they pulled all of our ammunition out when the riots came on. Really? Oh. Yes, we have, we have nothing. So you mean like you sold out or they pulled it off the shelf? No, no, no. They didn't sell out. They took it out. Our people at Walmart took it out and put it in the safe in the back of the warehouse. They haven't put it back in yet. Oh, wow. Do you know when they're going to bring it back out? Uh, I don't know. I don't know when they're going to bring it back in. No, that's unprecedented. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just to take you know, cautionary measures. Yeah. Just, just in case you know they were to move out. To the county here and all kinds of stuff. So. 
Okay. They were just precautionary measures that it decided just to take it all off. And the other day, I actually had that off, the knives, uh, most of the BB guns, everything that could yeah, be used as a weapon and like actually do harm, we had pulled off the shelves. Okay. The other day. All right, well. I, I was allowed to put this, everything but the ammo back out, and that came from uh, corporate. Okay. So I can't do anything about it. <laughs> All right. I understand. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, we hope they stay safe. And the violence in Baltimore has uh, calmed down a great deal. But let's not forget what the source of the violence in Baltimore is. Just as in other places, the source of the anger, the source of the frustration, the fountainhead of all this has been police brutality and death of people in the hands of the police when they presented absolutely no threat to the police. Now we see the police are pushing back with an interesting narrative that, frankly, I don't find to be very credible. This is from the Washington Post. We have it on Infowars.com. Now we hear that a prisoner who supposedly was in the van with Freddie Gray said that Gray was trying to injure himself. Now they, he says that he heard him banging about on the walls of the vehicle and then makes the implication here that he was intentionally trying to injure himself. Well, I don't really know how that individual could determine that. Uh, he was also picked up, I think, a half hour after they had picked him up. Nevertheless, let's remember that just today we also had some evidence resurface that showed that they made an additional stop that they had not reported. What were they doing in that stop? This is what we see continually from the police. Not full disclosure. We see them being caught in lies, inaccuracies, incomplete information. And so the question is, will justice be done? And that is at the heart of these riots there. Here's the Washington Post. A recounting of that. They say a prisoner sharing a police transport van with Freddie Gray told investigators he could hear Gray banging against the walls of the vehicle, believed he was intentionally trying to injure himself. Now, here's the interesting thing. The prisoner is currently in jail, and he was separated at the time from Gray by a metal partition, so he couldn't really see it. He didn't have any conversation with him to see if he was in a suicidal uh, mood. And remember that his neck was broken 80% of the way through. An amazing uh, story, if it is true, if he could do that to himself. Now, you also need to understand that this prisoner is remaining anonymous. That also, to me, looks suspicious. Just as I said, we have already seen them uh, giving us partial information that turns out to not be true with this footage that was released today. We also have another update from the mayor. Fox News reports that the Baltimore mayor ordered police to stand down and let them loot. Now, we've already had a video of the mayor saying that she had given them space to destroy. This is the report coming out of uh, the Daily Caller and Fox News. They say this is coming from a very senior law enforcement official with direct knowledge of the orders that were given by the mayor and her police commanders down to the very core of the police riot units. They say she, the message was, let them loot its only property. Supposedly, that is uh, what they were telling them to try to uh, keep this contained. That does not contain anything, quite frankly. To let them destroy the neighborhood, to destroy the businesses there, many of them minority-owned, to destroy cars that belong to the people in the neighborhood, how does that help anything? And we need to also understand that this is part of an agenda, I believe, to try to balkanize the country, to divide us, white against black, the civilians against the police, as they'd like to call us civilians. We need to not buy into this narrative. We need to press forward peacefully with demonstrations to make sure that justice is done, that we can change the way that the police are treating us. The police have already changed the way they're treating us. They used to not treat people the way they do now. These are new rules that have come out of the federal government about how they are to respond to people. We also see that they are not held accountable when they use uh, lethal force and their life is not in danger. We need to change it back to the way that it was, and we need to change our country back to the way it was in many different areas. And of course, one of those is private property. Many people are pushing the narrative that it really pales to worry about private property when we have people who are being killed by the police in custody. But you need to understand that if you don't have property rights, you are the property. You are a slave. It's just that simple. Property rights are like the rights to keep and bear arms. They're one of our fundamental rights. They're very important, just like the right of free speech. 
And to give you an update as to what's happening in defense of property rights in the Oregon mine, the Oregon gold mine, uh, where they now have uh, the Oath Keepers in a security mode against the BLM. If you remember, we reported that the BLM was going to have a deadline. It's nearly a week that this deadline has passed. They had told these people who had operated the mine for 150 years, they had to close it down, seal it up, fill up all the holes, and to remove all of their equipment and buildings by last Saturday. That's nearly a week ago. When they got that notification, they asked for legal clarification, and they were stonewalled by the BLM. At that point, they asked for Oath Keepers and other people, uh, three percenters, to set up a security operation. And that's what happened. It isn't a showdown at this point. Nevertheless, word has now come out by uh, Locked and Loaded News, and I've also had some reports from some people we're in contact with. There are concerns that outside contractors are being brought in by the BLM. This report says on 29th of April, it was reported that the command center of Operation Gold Rush was under continual observation by unknown surveillance operatives that the BLM had brought in armed security contractors. And of course, this is exactly what they did at the Bundy Ranch. They had observers there watching the entire week that we were there before the standoff eventually happened. And they had been pointing guns at people at the same time. They had actually, in that particular case, there had been some violent confrontations by the BLM. But they point out that the BLM denied knowledge of the security contractor's existence. They said these men were simply, uh, that, that had been spotted, were simply attending a pizza party in Medford celebrating the retirement of a co-worker. They said, however, that was not where they saw the uh, people uh, that they're concerned about being contractors. And so they go on to say, they don't wish to engage in speculation at this time. However, the narratives simply do not match. And that brings us back to where we started at the beginning of the broadcast. When you lie to people, and we see this happening from the government, we saw it happen from Walmart. There's all kinds of speculation now about why Walmart is closing those stores because we know it isn't the plumbing. They haven't applied for any plumbing permits. I don't believe that it has anything to do with Jade Helm. Nevertheless, and nobody here does. Nevertheless, when you tell people lies, that's when people start to investigate, and that invites speculation. And so that's exactly what we see happening with the BLM, because no one in the government at any level seems to be capable of any transparency and honesty. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk about how the Homeland Security Chief tells Rand Paul that he really doesn't understand the legal issues of the Fourth Amendment, and we're going to talk about all the president's psychologists. The APA was actually actively working with the CIA and their torture program. Stay with us, we'll be right back. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139.
Now in a story on Infowars.com today, we see that Rand Paul grills the head of Homeland Security. And the head of Homeland Security admits that he doesn't really know anything about the Fourth Amendment and could care less, quite frankly. Here's that clip. Do you believe the government has the right to have bulk collection of records from millions of individuals without a warrant? Ah, uh, I see. Um, that is, I, I respectfully say that that probably, that is beyond my competence as the Secretary of Homeland Security to answer in any intelligent legal way. I wouldn't want to hazard a legal judgment on that. Now, of course, as you listen to that clip, one of the first things that Rand Paul asked him about is third-party data collection. This is something that phone companies and internet service providers have been doing and turning over to the government. And the government has maintained that they don't need a search warrant because this is information that because you signed up with a cell phone provider or with an internet service provider, that they own that information about you. It's not your information. So all they have to do is ask the phone company or the internet service provider and they if they willingly turn that information over, they don't need a search warrant. That's the discussion they should have had. But the discussion that they got was that Jay Johnson really doesn't know or care about this. He goes, that sounds like you're making a, asking a legal question. I can't answer a legal question. I mean, who would think that the head of Homeland Security would know or care what the law is in this country? And that's a good question. We all know that he doesn't know or care what the law is. It's great that Rand Paul asked this question, very much like what Ron Wyden did when he asked James Clapper uh, about surveillance, and James Clapper was caught in a lie. We know that uh, Jay Johnson knows this issue. I don't think he's as stupid as he appears to be in this video. The issue is, as Rand Paul points out, it's your agency that is coordinating and in charge of getting and keeping a lot of this information. And he says, furthermore, he says there's no, further in that, that video, he says there is no person named Verizon that you can go get a search warrant from. So you're going to a judge and saying, I want to collect all this information. You're not following the Fourth Amendment in any way, shape, or form. But of course, Jay Johnson pleads ignorance. Now, there has been a lawsuit brought about this very issue. It was brought by Judicial Watch, Larry Clayman. And it was about Verizon, quite frankly. That's one of the reasons why Rand Paul uh, mentioned that. I'm sure he knows about this lawsuit. Back in 2013, it was 16 months ago, a judge says, yeah, I think that is probably unconstitutional. But he put a stay on his order, and he suspended the discovery portion of the trial. Larry Clayman is asking that that be revised now because he has a witness who has information that two members of the Supreme Court have been targeted by our U.S. spy agencies. And by that, I mean the NSA and the CIA. This is a uh, individual named Dennis Montgomery, they say, who can testify about the unconstitutional and illegal surveillance conducted by the NSA and CIA that is highly relevant and of crucial importance as he worked closely with these agencies following September 11, 2001. That was from Clay, uh, Clayman. And he says, furthermore, that his poor health adds to the urgency that his testimony be taken now. So he's asking that the trial would resume. Now, on yesterday's filing, when he asked for this trial to be resumed so this man's testimony could be taken, Clayman revealed that Montgomery would provide evidence that intelligence agencies have even spied on and collected private and personal information on Supreme Court Justices John Roberts and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This is a report that's on WND.com. Now, one of the things that this brings up, of course, is what... Many of us have said for a very long time, even before the Ed Snowden leaks, many of us were opening, openly questioning whether or not Chief Justice Roberts had been blackmailed into changing his vote on Obamacare. If you remember when that came up, everyone said Obamacare was going to be struck down as an unconstitutional mandate by the Supreme Court because they have no right to mandate us to buy anything. Now, of course, they're going to mandate us to have injections. That's going to be another fight. Nevertheless, it was going to be five to four. Chief Justice Roberts had written the opinion that would have struck down Obamacare. And at the last minute, he changed his opinion and he wrote the opinion for the other side saying, it's a tax so the government can do it. That is pretty much unprecedented. I personally don't know of any other occasion where a justice has written both the dissenting opinion as well as the concurring opinion. 
And so many people questioned at the time whether or not he was being blackmailed. Then the leaks came out from uh, Snowden, and we understood publicly, everybody understood at that time, just how broad the surveillance powers of the government were being abused. And that raises the issue as to whether or not that was what was, in fact, behind it. Now we have someone who is ready to testify, in fact, that Chief Justice Roberts, along with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, were two justices who their, where their personal information was being collected by the NSA as well as the CIA. But of course, there's nothing to worry about, is there? Think about the fact that even with your toll passes, you're being spied upon. This is a story that came out of New York. The New York Easy Pass is being used to spy on motorists even when they're not on tolls tracking where they're going. This has been revealed by the New York branch of the American Civil Liberties Union. They say the Transportation Department has a $5 million federally funded, federally funded surveillance program. You see where this is all coming from. It all comes from the feds. They are writing the rules for the police brutality. They are writing the rules for the surveillance state. And then they fund it with this bogus borrowed money from the Federal Reserve. That's where we see this everywhere. And understand that when you look at your traffic reports with uh, your Google map or you look at it online and you see those uh, green, yellow, or red lines showing how the traffic is, they are already looking at your traffic information. You can assume and hope that they are not tracking you personally, but when they do it with an easy pass, that makes people even more concerned that there is a tracking system in place to track you individually, to track your movement, as well as just look at what the congestion is on a road. That's the way they will sell it to people, but the government already has its hooks into you, as well as Google and many private companies who have been doing uh, traffic reports for a very long time. Now, in a report called All the President's Psychologists, we find that it appears that the American uh, Psychology Association has been involved with the CIA's torture program not only providing legal cover for it, but also helping them to administer it. This is on Infowars.com. The Psychological Association, that is the American Psychological Association, the APA, collaborated to justify Bush-era torture policy. And as they say in the subtitle there, secretly coordinating with officials from the CIA White House and Department of Defense to create an APA ethics policy on national security interrogations. But as we see from the actual report, It goes even farther than that. Now, the report is based on emails that were obtained by New York Times reporter James Risen. There are 638 emails that they they obtained from a now recently deceased Rand Corporation researcher who was working with the CIA, apparently, from the emails. They analyze in this report 16 of these emails in key details. And they call the name of this report is All of the President's Psychologists. A very apt name for this. Listen to one of these emails. This is an email from Dr. Kirk Hubbard, then CIA senior behavioral scientist back in 2003, to Dr. Jeffrey Mumford with the APA. He's the director of science policy there. Now, this is explaining why a couple of doctors are not responding after a conference that had been held by the usual suspects, the APA, the CIA, and the RAND Corporation, which works hand in glove with the intelligence communities. This is what was said in the email. You won't get any feedback from Dr. Mitchell or Dr. Jessen. They're doing special things to special people in special places. Isn't that nice? They're doing special things to special people in special places, and they're generally not available. See, this goes far beyond just trying to justify in terms of a medical ethics what they were doing. And of course, we don't really have medical ethics anymore in this country, do we? If the government can hold a gun to your head and force you to take vaccinations or force you to do any kind of medical uh, therapy without your informed consent. But of course, we see that if we allow these things to happen in the terms of foreign policy, and that's what we're concerned about with Jade Helm, when the government is allowed to do these types of operations abroad, as we've been warned by our founders, James Madison, The means of defense from foreign danger have always become the tools of tyranny at home. That's why we're concerned about Jade Helm. That's why we're concerned about an out-of-control government that is doing this. Now, here's the key findings that they came up with. They said there's three key findings. Number one, there's widespread and secret complicity 
of the APA with the CIA and Bush administration officials. Number two, false statements and misrepresentation of facts. They say APA ethics policy aligned with the operational needs of the CIA torture program. In other words, they just did whatever the CIA told them they really needed. They didn't have any ethical stands whatsoever. They just adjusted their ethics to the situation as it was described by the CIA. They say there is no evidence that the APA demonstrated concern about detainee abuse. And of course, they probably knew about that because they were doing special things to special people in special places. The APA also concealed its contacts with Mitchell and Jessen, the two uh, missing psychiatrists that they talk about there, a psychologist. The APA concealed Mitchell's APA membership. And then the third uh, finding that they have out of this report is that senior APA staff and leadership played a central role in the alleged complicity of the U.S. government officials. In other words, it takes place at the very highest levels of the APA. That's what they learned from these emails. Interesting what you can find from emails, isn't it? Maybe that's why Hillary Clinton and so many government officials are so jealously guarding all of their emails and all their secrets as they probe into ours. And as we close, I just want to let you remind you one more time that when we talk about Jade Helms, it is fundamentally a unconventional warfare scenario. That's what they admit in their, in their uh, literature that they sent to the local government officials. An unconventional warfare is basically a psychological operation. That's the most important aspect of it. When they actually get into fighting, then they call it asymmetric warfare. Unconventional warfare is really about controlling the people who make the decisions in the community, the local government. That's precisely what we see happening with Jade Helm. And when you look at the attacks on InfoWars, remember that it was the CIA that came up with Operation Mockingbird, and one of their best tactics is to use ad hominem straw man arguments, and that's what we saw at the beginning of the program. Well, that's our news for tonight. If you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please subscribe there. You can be notified of everything that we're doing. And if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please support our operation. Your subscription is our budget for this operation, and it helps to uh, spread the news to other people. On the night it happens, you can give that to 20 other people as it happens Monday through Friday. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.